worship him in his majesty. Awesome God, must God, see his God. splendor we see in part, but through Christ he has come to us, wondrous glory has won I can get up off 
Resurrection day, nothing's gonna hold me in the grave. This is my resurrection day, nothing's gonna hold me down. Say goodbye to my yesterdays, ever since I met you, I am changed. This is my resurrection day, nothing's gonna hold me down. Whoa, oh, 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 whoa, Good morning and welcome to St Andrew's Church and this All Age service. It's lovely to have everyone with us this morning and the sun is shining. Goodness me. Can anyone explain what that big bright light in the sky is that we haven't seen for so long? Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? Uh, have your bodies adjusted to the clock change yet? Are you... Are you still slightly out of course? I've been on holiday this week and I'm still running an hour later. Everything's an hour later than it should be. Uh, next week will be a bit of a wake-up call, I think, for me. But um, isn't it great as Easter people that we have this season where we celebrate, in particular, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus? And, of course, that means he is present with us here today. Uh, what a glorious way to, to celebrate Easter. I hope you had a good Easter weekend last weekend and... Uh, but we continue as a church to celebrate Easter over the next few weeks. And um, let me begin with uh, an opening prayer as we gather this morning. So Heavenly Father, thank you for this new day. Thank you that your mercies are new every morning. Thank you for new life in Jesus. Thank you for the hope that that gives us, for the light 
that shines into this world because the light of Christ has risen. Thank you for this time you've blessed us with this morning. We pray that you'd encourage those who are struggling. We pray that you'd rejoice with those who are rejoicing and weep with those who are weeping. And bring us together uh, to a celebration of Jesus' resurrection and a hope that this world is being restored. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So my name is Peter, I'm the rector here at St Andrews. We welcome Su Diong, a previous church warden, who's going to be preaching to us a little later on, uh, speaking in two different parts on the, the I of the resurrection story and the we of the resurrection story. So we look forward to that a little bit later on. But we're going to start by singing a lovely song, Great Things. Do stand as we sing together. You conquered the grave. You free and free 
Father, that you have done great things. You've done the great thing of rising our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, of defeating death and sin, conquering the grave, and giving us hope. We pray that that hope may live within us brightly, shine in our lives and in the life of our community. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Do please take your seats. And uh, a couple of notices from me. It's, uh, it was our Easter gift day last Sunday, and fantastic news. We've had the current total through, which is that we have raised almost £12,000 from our gift day. Wonderful response. Thank you so much to all of you who gave, and uh, it's a wonderful total that will enable us to continue with the building works around the front of the church there. Uh, and um, we're really, really thrilled. There's more information uh, in the foyer if you'd like to uh, see exactly what's been planned. Um, and uh, if you'd like to give, there's still an opportunity to do that as well. Uh, but thank you so much for such a generous response to that gift day. Uh, coming up uh, in the church calendar, we've got Women's Fellowship on Tuesday. Pippa Brown is going to be talking to uh, the women gathering there about the trip to Rwanda. So that'll be a really special time. And next Saturday is the ladies' breakfast as well. You can sign up in the foyer. And um, there's a concert in a couple of weeks' time from uh, a gentleman called Ishmael, who some of you may remember from Spring Harvest Days. Uh, but he's going to be sharing about his cancer journey. Uh, him and his wife are coming together uh, to uh, do a concert. It's, uh, it's a whole mixture of things, and he's going to explain it much better than I am. So we've got a, a video about it. It's on Saturday the 20th of April. And I'll let, uh, I'll let Ish explain all about it. Hi, everyone. Ish here, as you can see. Because our When the Road is Rough and Steep testimony concert is unlike anything else you are likely to go and see, I've been asked to say a few words to explain what it's all about. When I was in hospital with leukaemia, unsure if I would live or die, I made God a promise. If he chose to keep me alive, I would travel the country and share the things that he had taught me through going through this cancer experience. I also said I would write a very detailed personal account of my journey to hopefully help others. It took a very long time before I had the guts to write it, I must admit, because I knew I was going to have to relive through some of the most difficult times in my life. It's a book Irene and I wrote together, you may have seen it, it's called Our Cancer Journey. This uh, testimony concert really brings Our Cancer Journey book to life. It's all about what both of us have learned from going through very difficult times. I share, of course, from the sufferer's perspective. Irene shares from the carers. But the concert is not just about telling ancient history stories. It's very much up to date, as I even share what I've learned through going through my recent stroke. Understandably, there's some very serious bits, but will it not be in any way heavy or depressing. And I promise some of the stories will provide smiles, plenty of smiles. Can you ever imagine a totally serious-ish event? Although Irene and I pray it would be a time of encouragement for any who may be suffering from or have had cancer or those caring for them, we briefly cover other rough and steep issues like bereavement, disappointment, depression, prayer, both answered and unanswered. It will be informal and we will intersperse the chat with quite a few appropriate songs and hymns which enhance our testimony story and also allow our listeners to participate in singing with me, if they so choose. We've already done this concert many, many times and been amazed by the number of both believers and seekers who have been helped and encouraged. I conclude the concert by singing, Father God, I will sing your praises forevermore. Because, of course, that is what this testimony concert is all about. Always dangerous making a promise to God, isn't it? <laughs> but isn't that lovely? And we're really looking forward to that. Saturday the 20th of April. Do you think of someone you might invite who perhaps you know has been through a cancer journey or going through one at the moment? 
and uh, might just help them. Uh, and so that's uh, no tickets, just come along on the night. Uh, donations are invited, and uh, it should be a really, really good evening. One of the joys of being involved in an Anglican church is we get to uh, spend time with people at key moments in their life, not just uh, through suffering, but through uh, joyful moments as well. We're having a Thanksgiving and blessing christening this afternoon at All Saints, and we've got some bands of marriage to publish now. So um, let me do that. So I published the bands of marriage between Thomas James Charles Welsh of the parish of Dibden and Tiffany May Hassel, also of the parish of Dibden. This is for the first time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why they may not marry each other, you are to declare it. So let me just say a prayer for Thomas and Tiffany. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing Thomas and Tiffany together. Thank you for the love they enjoy between them. And we pray that they would be excited as they look forward to their special day and that you would bind them together in your love as they make promises to one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Testimony of many people, whatever happens in life, whether things are going well or things are going difficult, that God is good through it all. We're going to sing about that good God now. Do stand as we sing together. Lottie will be doing some actions. If anyone wants to follow her, that would be great.
see many of you following Lottie's last uh, <laughs> action there. Very disappointed, very disappointed. Do take your seats, please. James is now going to come. James Willett, our youth minister, is going to come and share some really exciting news about our holiday club, which we're hoping to resurrect this summer. We haven't done a holiday club for three or four years, uh, and James is uh, taking it on uh, and leading it, and he's going to tell you a little bit about a meeting he's got with some leaders. So, James, over to you. Thank you, Peter. I'm sorry, Lottie, I did have a guitar. It's quite difficult to do a headstand with a guitar. Um, so... Uh, yes, in a couple of weeks' time, on the 28th of April, you may have seen in the church family emails that I'm wanting anyone who would like to be a part of the Holiday Club at all, whether that's to do some leading, some um, helping by just registering the children at the uh, start of the day, maybe helping with some refreshments or just supporting in any way. Um, if you could come along on the 28th of April um, after the church service, just for about half an hour we'll be meeting in the coffee house and we'd just like to share with you what our theme is, what the activities are going to be each day and what the vision is for the Holiday Club. If you have any interest, please come along. There's no, uh, no pressure on responsibility. You won't be forced to lead a group of 20 children just because you step through the door, uh, but we'd love to um, have you involved in any way that you're able to. Um, so if you can come along, that would be great. Uh, I'm going to ask David if you can put up the screen um, because I've also been asked to share a little bit about our theme this morning. If any children would like to come up to the front. Don't let me down, Ezekiel. Come on. <laughs> come on, Josiah. Good job. Okay. It is our, um, I'm in the middle of Easter uh, today, so um, we have a few children who are awake. Can you take a seat for me, please? I'm going to ask you a few questions when we'll look up on the screen in a moment, okay? So our theme today is seeing and believing. It's not seeing is believing, just so we're clear, but put your hands up if you think seeing is believing. Do you think you've got to see something to believe it? Oh, go on, Ezekiel. Maybe. Maybe. What do you mean? <laughs> I mean that. Uh... Um, you can believe in stuff even if you don't see them. Okay, so you can believe in some things even if you don't see them. So maybe seeing is not believing. So I'm going to show you a few optical illusions. Hopefully they'll work even though they're on a split screen on the screen here. So the first one, let's have a look at that one. See if you can focus on the middle of the pattern. How does that feel? Dizzy. It makes you feel dizzy, does it, Josiah? What do you think, Lottie? Looks like all the circles are going round. It does look like all of the circles are moving round. They're not. So maybe seeing is not believing. Let's have a look at the next one. What do you think, Leah? <laughs> not quite yet. Okay. You can't, it's like you can't get out of there. You can't get out of there. Maybe you feel a little claustrophobic when you look at that. Almost looks like it's spinning. I'm thinking it does also look a little bit like the inside of, um, of the TARDIS, if it was uh, a little jazzy. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. Any adults want to share how they feel when they look at that? It's throbbing. Looks like it's throbbing. It does look a bit like it's throbbing. Yeah, it does make you feel a bit strange, doesn't it? Any other thoughts? Expanding and contracting. It's expanding and contracting. Excellent, yes. Now, these next few pictures, you might see something different to the person next to you. So I'm going to show the next picture, and I'd like you to tell the person next to you what you can see. Tell the person next to you. Okay, anyone want to share what they can see? Go on. A rabbit and a duck. You can see a rabbit and a duck. Ambidextrous, well done, you can see both. See, I would, I would focus, I would see the rabbit, but then if I look for the duck, I might see that. Can anyone explain to us where, uh, can anyone just see one or the other? No? So the, do you want to explain? 
where, where can you see the can you see a rabbit or a dog? I can see both. Yes. Yeah, so both. Can... Okay. So the, the it could be the rabbit's ears on the left there, and with the mouth on the right. That's the rabbit. But it could also be a duck with the ears being the beak of the duck, looking in the opposite direction up to the top left. Okay. Let's have a look at the next one, please, David. What can you see here? Yeah, Tommy, what can you see? Well, I see the young lady, and I also see a bit of a shriveled old witch. An old lady, uh, sorry, an old witch and a lady. I'm not sure that she's necessarily a witch, but we... <laughs> so you can see uh, there's an old woman and there's also a younger woman. So the younger woman um, on the left, you can see her eyelash. She's looking away from us with her ear. Um, but then if you look at the old lady... Um, the, uh, the young woman's chin is the old lady's nose, and the young woman's ear is her eye. Some are still a little uncertain. <laughs> now, I've seen those before, but this next one I found just by preparing this. So let's have a look at the next one, see what you can see in the next one. Okay, what can you see? I can see the cross being carried in the face of Jesus. Yes, so there are two pictures there. You can see the face of Jesus with all of the darker colors being his hair and his beard. And you can see Jesus carrying the cross with Simon helping him on his nose. That was where the cross is. Can we see that yet? Okay. So maybe seeing is not believing, but also... Our friend might see something slightly different to us, but it says in the Bible to fix our eyes on Jesus, even when there are different distractions and when there are temptations elsewhere. That's why Simon Peter fell into the water when he was fixing his eyes on Jesus before and walking towards him. So let's have a think about fixing on our eyes on Jesus with this next one. Now, if you have a look at this, you can't quite see what it is, almost looks like one of those um, Rorschach symbols, but what I'm going to ask you to do is you can see those, there are three dots right in the center of the picture. And I'm gonna ask you to focus on those three dots, try and focus on them without blinking. I'll count to 30 in my head, and then I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes and you'll see something a little interesting. So focus on those three dots for me, please, for 30 seconds. Close your eyes. What, what can you see, boys? Jesus. Jesus. Okay, you might be able to see Jesus. Some might have not quite done it. It's better if you have a, a blank piece of paper or something white in front of you, but I didn't have enough pieces of paper for everybody. But you could find that at home if you wanted to try that again. Okay, let's pray. Lord, I pray that we would fix our eyes on you, even when there might be distractions or temptations to look in a different direction. I pray that we would focus on you and follow you this next week. Amen. Thank you so much, James. We're going to stand and sing again our next song. Uh, led like a lamb, which is celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. Do stand as we sing together.
your seats. We've been prompted to be thinking about seeing and believing. Paul Carter is now going to come and give our first Bible reading. After that, Sue will share a first thought uh, on this theme of seeing and believing. Thank you. The first reading is to be found on page 1089 in the Pew Bibles, 1089. It's uh, John chapter 20, starting at verse 24 to the end of the chapter. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Through the door, though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good to be here with you. And, uh, yeah, I wonder if you've ever missed out on something children you have missed may have missed out on something sometimes you've forgotten it about it or you've not been very well and you've not been able to go somewhere you may have missed out well our story this morning about thomas is very much isn't it about someone who really did miss out it's a very personal story isn't it Perhaps when you missed out, well, you just, you know, you just didn't want to go where others were. Perhaps you wanted to spend time on your own. You had other things to do, other issues to deal with. Perhaps this was Thomas. We don't know the details, do we? But Thomas, one of the twelve, well, he was not there with the disciples when Jesus came. Wow, he did miss out big time, didn't he? He was not there. He had missed out. So what were those disciples doing? Well, they'd come together and they had locked the doors. After events of the previous days, they were fearful and they were worried what was going to happen next. The tomb was empty. We've celebrated Easter, haven't we? We've had our Easter eggs helping us think about the empty tomb. It was empty. Mary Magdalene had apparently seen Jesus. Who knows what was going on in the minds of the disciples? And they were probably keeping very quiet, not wanting to draw attention to their gathering. In the quietness, with the doors locked, feeling somewhat fearful, Jesus came. Jesus came and stood among them, and Jesus spoke to them, saying, Peace be with you. Perhaps he knew how troubled they felt inside. And what did he do? Well, he showed his disciples his hands and his side. He showed them those scars of crucifixion. And they all saw him. 
but Thomas was not there. Thomas had missed out. Well, if we'd been there, wouldn't we have wanted Thomas to know? If he's the one who's missed out, we'd want to go and tell Thomas, wouldn't we? And knowing this, the disciples wanted to do that. They wanted to go, and they went, and they said, we have seen the Lord. We've seen him. Would we have believed them? Thomas just couldn't quite believe it. He wants to see for himself. And he sets out some conditions. He says, unless I see those nail marks in Jesus' hands, unless I can put my finger where the nails were, unless I can put my hand into Jesus' side, I will not believe it. Ooh, he wants to see. He wants to touch. He wants to find out if it's really true. It's about a week later. It's the same house, the, the doors are locked. But this time Thomas is with the other disciples. And I wonder if they're still trying to convince him and saying, yeah, last week we were here and Jesus came. Jesus really did come. Well, they don't need any more words, do they? Because John tells us that Jesus appears just as he had done a week earlier. And who does he talk to? Well, he talks to Thomas. He says, come on then, Thomas. You can put your finger into my scarred hands. You can put your hand into my side. You can touch me. Look at me. You can see me. Wow, how did Thomas feel? Jesus knew all about the demands Thomas has made. He calls him to let go of his doubts and believe. What does Thomas say in response? What words did he find? He found these very profound words, didn't he? As he says to Jesus, my Lord and my God. It's personal. It's between him and Jesus. So what about us then? What about our response to the risen Lord Jesus? We declare our faith together often when we meet, don't we? And we say about what we believe and we say, I believe in Jesus. I believe he was the one who suffered, was buried, who died. But I believe he rose again. We make a personal confession of faith when we say that together. When at Caesarea Philippi, Jesus had been aware that there was a lot of speculation about his identity. Some people were saying, oh, is it, is it John the Baptist? Is it Elijah? Is he Jeremiah? Is he another one of the prophets? But Jesus looks right at Peter and he says to Peter, what about you? Who do you say I am? Who do you say I am? I wonder if we could imagine Jesus saying that directly to us today, to you, to me personally. No, Jesus doesn't stand here, does he, in this church among us. There's a sense in which we're in a building. We haven't got the doors locked, but we're gathered together, aren't we? We're not seeing his risen body, are we? But we have these wonderful <coughs> eyewitness accounts to inform our faith. And in a lovely way, Jesus reaches out to those who will not see as those disciples did. When he says... Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And that's you and that's me. 
Because, let me say this morning, Jesus doesn't want, does he, anyone to miss out. The Son came loving the whole world. His longing is for everyone to know he's alive and of his love for them. And that's an individual thing. Just for me, just for you, and just as it was for Thomas. So a little thought this morning. If you feel a bit like a lost sheep, well, Jesus is looking just for you if you want to be found. We're going to stand and sing together.
second reading, please be seated. Our second reading is on page 1096, 1096. It's from Acts 4, starting at verse 32. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions were their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there was no needy person among them. For from time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone who had need. This is the word of the Lord. So, part two. Um, we very much thought, haven't we, about Thomas, about an individual's response to the resurrection. Uh, we just read this bit in Acts, and we're now in the days of the early church the fellowship of believers i know the word church not used for a little while and it's a positive picture isn't it real togetherness a unity of heart and mind faith expressed in a genuine care for one another and there's real generosity sacrificial giving really is a very attractive picture of the church but by just saying those things, well, you could say, well, any organisation could be like that, couldn't it? Could have a similar ethos, united and caring and generous and supportive. How are we different? Well, there's a verse in the middle of our reading, isn't there, that challenges what I've just said. And we read this with great power. The apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Much grace was upon them all. Jesus' presence among the apostles and this early church, well, it's not the same anymore, is it? As it was in that room when the disciples met the risen Lord. It's not the same. Jesus has now ascended to his Father in heaven. So he is now a spiritual presence, isn't he? He is the Holy Spirit. He is the Spirit of Jesus. But the teaching and witness of those apostles continues to take those early believers back to that time when Jesus, well, he was seen. He was born. He lived a life. He did die but also it was a time when he was seen again after being raised from the dead this picture of those early christians sees them meeting together and they devoted themselves to this teaching and they passed it on they met to break bread as we do they met to pray they are known for praising god in worship and that's what we come to do as we gather this is the we and the us of faith isn't it expressed in coming together and a lovely sense in which the people online they are able to join with us okay they're not gathering physically with us but they are joining in too and we welcome you a quote from Bishop J.C. Ryle who says this, how much Christians may lose by not regularly attending gatherings of God's people. The very sermon we needlessly miss may contain the message our souls need. The very assembly for praise and prayer from which we stayed away may be the gathering that would have cheered and established and uplifted our hearts. And that's our prayer this morning as we gather, isn't it? That God would cheer us, establish us, and uplift our hearts as we gather together. As Peter said at the beginning, we are, aren't we, Easter people 
who celebrate the risen Lord. And Jesus' words also remind us, don't they, that where two or three come together, there he is with them. We're a lovely group here this morning. Some church groups will be small. Jesus says where two or three gather, he is with them. And he is here now, unseen, but here. Peter writes this in his first letter. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him. I'll finish with five words from Revelation right at the beginning of the book. And they declare this, that one day in the future, every eye will see him. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much, Sue. I'm going to invite Anne Turner, who's going to come and lead us in prayer now. Thank you, Anne. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for the many blessings you pour into our lives day by day. We praise and thank you for our families and friends and for all that you provide for us, for good food, for comfortable homes and for good health. We pray for all those who are not as fortunate as we are and we pray especially for all who are living in extreme poverty and for all who are living in the many areas in our world where there is conflict and desolation. Lord, we pray that you will be with these unfortunate people, filling them with your healing power and empowering those who are trying to make a difference in these difficult situations. We pray that you'll be, bring comfort and hope to all who are suffering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we pray for all the children and young people who are enjoying their Easter holiday at the moment, whether they're at home or away somewhere special. We pray that they will all stay safe, well, during this time and have safe travel. We pray too for all the teaching staff having a well-earned break, that they will be able to rest, relax and revitalise ready for the start of term in a week's time. We lift up Peter, Ian and James and their families at this time, following the business of the week leading up to Easter and pray that they will have time to rest and recover during the past week. We thank you for all they bring to our church family to unite us with you. We give thanks and praise too for the coffee house staff and all the volunteers working with them. We thank you that so many more people are now using the coffee house and pray that it will continue to be a wonderful outreach for our church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, we lift up to you now all who we know who are sick and suffering and pray that you will fill each one with your healing power. We give thanks for all the medical staff who are caring for them. We pray for all who have lost loved ones recently, that you will bring them comfort at this time and help them to move on in their lives and help them to remember the joyous times they have shared with their loved ones. Lord, we ask all these prayers in the name of Jesus, our Saviour and Friend. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And we're going to continue in prayer by saying the Lord's Prayer together. The words should come on the screen if you're not familiar with it. And uh, we'll pray that, the prayer Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I'm going to stand and sing our final song, Living Hope. No. Okay. 
Christians, we believe in an empty cross, don't we? An empty grave clothes, an empty tomb, and the risen Lord Jesus that is with us today through the ups and downs of life. And we praise you, Father, for it. Amen. 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 So uh, it's lovely to have everyone taking part in the service. Fantastic. Thank you for leading us so well in our worship this morning, our all age band. Thank you to the technical team who've uh, sorted everything out at the back of the sound for us. Thank you to Sue for speaking. Uh, for those who've welcomed us and done the refreshments, and for those online who've joined us too. It's been lovely to gather together as we've celebrated this news together as Easter people. Uh, welcome to come and join us for refreshments through the double doors there, and uh, it'd be great to uh, continue our time of fellowship together in that way. Uh, we're going to end by saying the grace together in just a moment, but also there'll be prayer ministry at the front. If you want to uh, have some people stand with you in prayer over anything that's happened uh, this week, that uh, you'd value prayer for. Let's uh, end with the words of the grace that come on the screen in just a moment. So the grace the of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ and, and the love of God and the, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with us all, evermore. Amen. Amen. Take care. God bless. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. I was breathing, but not. Oh, uh-huh.
Oh, my name. 